my name is Diamond Lockhart. And I'm Crystal Rohm. And we are doctors of physical therapy students at Texas Women's University. This is our final video of a series of three where we are going to discuss new baby development. Today, we're going to focus on providing you with information regarding age appropriate milestones, ways to keep track of those milestones, common childhood diagnoses, resources to get help if you notice any delays in milestones, and positive parenting tips to ensure that you have the necessary resources for your child's development. We are now going to discuss milestones. We are not going to go through all of the milestones that you'll see in your baby. However, we're going to highlight the more important ones where you'll see the biggest change. So at six months, some things that you might notice in your baby is they'll begin to know familiar faces and begin to know if someone is a stranger. They'll string vowels um, together when babbling like I, ah, E, and O. Oh. They'll bring things to their mouth and look around at things nearby. And you also might see them start rolling over in both directions or begin to sit up without support. Now, whenever your baby becomes nine months, some things that you might notice is they may be clinging with familiar adults. They'll begin to understand the word no. They'll play peekaboo, and then they'll also begin to start crawling. At 12 months, you'll see your baby put out their arm or leg to help with getting dressed. They'll use simple gestures like shaking their head no or waving bye-bye. They'll start to use things correctly, for example, drinking from a cup or brushing their hair. And then they also might start pulling um, to stand up while walking on the furniture, which is known as cruising. So at 18 months, it's time for a developmental screening. At 18 months, your child is due for general developmental screening and an autism screening as recommended for all children by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Ask the doctor about your child's developmental screening. So some things you may notice in your 18 month old is that they may start to point to show others something interesting. They may say and shake their head no. They can follow one step verbal commands without gestures and they're able to walk alone. At 24 months, your child should begin to play mainly besides other children, but is beginning to include other children, such as in chase games. They can say sentences with two to four words. They can build towers of four or more blocks. They can follow two-step instructions, such as pick up your shoes and put them in a closet. They can start to kick a ball and begin to run. Now moving on to the Milestones Tracker app. So there is this app called the Milestones Tracker app, which is an app that can track your baby's milestones and help you with any concerns you may have. The app is also in Spanish. You can track your child's milestones from age two months to five years. This app has easy to use illustrated checklists to follow along. You can get tips from the CDC for encouraging your child's development and find out what to do if you're ever concerned about your child development. From birth to age five, your child should reach milestones in how he or she plays, learns, speaks, acts, and moves. There are photos and videos in the app which illustrate each milestone and make tracking them for your child easy and fun. Now I'm going to go through the features of the app. With the added child feature, you can enter personalized information about your child or multiple children. With the milestone tracker, you can track your child's developmental progress by looking for important milestones using an interactive illustrated checklist. With the milestone photos and videos, you know what each milestone looks like so you can get a better idea and better identify them in your own child. With the tips and activities feature, you can support your child's development at every age. With the when to act early feature, you know when it's time to act early and talk, about, talk with your child's doctor about any developmental concerns. With the appointments feature, you can keep track of your child's doctor appointments and get reminders about recommended developmental screenings. And lastly, with the milestone summary, you can get a summary of your child's milestones to view and share with or email to your doctor, your child's doctor or other important care providers. 
So here is what the app will look like when you download from either an Android with the left picture or an iPhone on the right picture. You can search the Milestones Tracker app and make sure you click on the app with the word CDC in the name. All right, so now we're going to talk about some common childhood diagnoses. According to the CDC, these are a common childhood diagnoses that are found in children. However, we are only going to discuss a few of them. If you would like more information um, about any of these di uh, diagnoses, we have the links to the website listed on the resource page. And if you downloaded the PDF version of our PowerPoint, you can easily click on whichever diagnosis that you want to look at and it'll navigate you straight to um, the page. So the first one that we're gonna talk about is autism. Autism spectrum disorder is a developmental disability. People with autism have problems with social, emotional, and communication skills. They might repeat certain behaviors and might not want to change up their daily activities. Some signs and symptoms that you might notice is the child will prefer to be held or cuddled unless they want to. They might have trouble relating to others or not have any interest in other people at all. They will avoid eye contact and want to be alone. They'll have trouble expressing their needs or using typical words or motions. And they'll also lose skills that they once had. For example, stop saying words that they were using. So the next one that we're gonna talk about is cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is a group of disorders that affect a person's ability to move and maintain balance and posture. CP is the most common motor disability in childhood. Cerebral means having to do with the brain and palsy means weakness or problems with using the muscles. CP is caused by abnormal brain development or damage to the developing brain that affects a person's ability to control his or her muscles. The symptoms of CP can vary from person to person. CP does not generally get worse over time, though the exact symptoms can change over a person's um, lifetime. So the doctor will classify CP according to the main types of movement disorders involved. Depending on which areas of the brain is affected, one or more of the following movement disorders can occur, as I have listed below here. So the first one is spasticity. This is the most um, common type, which means that you'll see your baby have like muscle stiffness and muscle tightness. Dyskinesia, which is uncontrollable movements, so your baby will show slow or rapid or jerky um, movements. Ataxia, which is difficulty with balance and coordination. And then also you have mixed CP, which is a combination of two or more of the above types that we have previously discussed. So how can we go about getting help for your child? So I found this resource listed on the CDC website that discusses how to address concerns with your doctor. Some key takeaways were to make an appointment if you notice anything unusual about your baby's development and make sure you schedule that appointment with your doctor. Um, to continue to complete that milestone checklist that Crystal talked about. So if you have any concerns, you can write them down and ask specific questions. So during that doctor's appointment, some things that you wanna do is show the doctor the completed child, the milestone checklist, ask the doctor about developmental screening for your child, and ask the doctor if the child needs further developmental screening if applicable. Now following that appointment, make sure you check your notes. If you don't understand something, make sure you ask again for the doctor to give you um, an explanation. And then also just review your notes following the appointment and the steps given to you by your doctor. <clears throat> 
You can also ask about early childhood intervention. If you notice any developmental delay, delays, Early Hood Child Intervention is a statewide program within the Texas Health and Human Service um, Commission for families with children birth up to, up to three with developmental delays, disabilities, or certain medical diagnosis that may impact development. So how does my child qualify for services? To be eligible for ECI services, the child must meet one of the three criteria: medically diagnosed condition, auditory or visual impairments, or developmental delays. So who is providing these services? There's a team of licensed or credential providers. So some of those would include speech and language pathologists, physical and occupational therapists, and the other healthcare providers that I have listed below. So how are these services provided? So through family-centered services, ECI professionals and the family members will incorporate activities into the daily routines to promote the child's development, such as working on specific tasks in familiar settings. The, um, most ECI services are provided at home. However, they can be provided in other places where the child goes, such as a child care center, the library, the park, or other community settings. You also have case management, and then just planning for next steps. So ECI services in once the child turns three. The ECI team, along with the family, will help to assist with transition into a public school, preschool, or child care centers. So how do I find ECI programs? You can search the ECI program in your area by using the ECI program search tool, which has been, which you can locate on the resource page that has been provided. So how do I go about paying for these services? ECI asks families who can afford to do so, to share in the cost of services. This is called the family, this is called the family cost share which is designed so families with the ability to pay will, will share in the cost of services. No child or family will be turned away because of the inability to pay for the services. And for more information regarding ECI, you can click on the link below. Now here are some tips and tricks for parenting, child safety, and child nutrition. Here are some positive parenting tips. I'm just going to mention a couple on this slide. So first, read to your toddler daily. It can potentially help them learn new words as they get older. Play matching games with your toddler. This helps with their memory. And also encourage your child's growing independence by letting them help with dressing themselves and feeding themselves. Here are some child safety tips. I will address the most important safety tips on this slide. First, do not leave your toddler near or around water without someone watching them. Drowning is the leading cause of injury and death among the age groups of one to two years old. Do not leave your toddler alone in any vehicle, even for a few moments. Keep your child's car seat rear facing as long as possible. This is the best way to keep them safe. Your child should remain in a rear facing car seat until they reach the top height or weight limit allowed by the car seat manufacturer. Once your child outgrows their rear facing car seat, they are ready to travel in a forward facing car seat with a harness. your children and healthy bodies. I won't say everything on this slide, but I will mention these. Limit screen time. It's recommended that children younger than 18 months not use any screen media other than video chatting. Let your child be active. It helps with developing their coordination and becoming strong. Make sure your child is getting enough sleep. Toddlers one to two years old need about 11 to 14 hours per 24 hours, including nap. Here are some nutrition tips. Keep introducing new flavors and textures. 
food preferences are set early in life, so help your child develop a taste for healthy foods now. Make sure to limit sweets and empty calories. And remember, you decide what healthy foods to offer at the table, and your child decides which of those foods to eat, how much to eat, and whether to eat it all. Concerns about milk? Most kids should, under two should drink whole milk. If a toddler is overweight or there is a family history of obesity, high cholesterol, or heart problems, your doctor might recommend switching to reduced fat milk or 2% milk. Some kids don't like cow's milk at first. It's different from breast milk or formula they're used to. It's okay to mix whole milk with formula or breast milk and gradually adjust until the milk is 100% cow's milk. Concerns about iron? As your child turns one years old, it's important to watch out for iron deficiency, for it can affect their physical, mental, and behavioral development and can also lead to anemia. Here are some things I listed in this slide that can help prevent iron deficiency. Talk to your doctor if your child drinks a lot of cow's milk, isn't getting enough iron-rich foods, or if you're thinking of giving your child a vitamin supplement. Your child should avoid any foods that can cause choking, including popcorn, hard candies, hot dogs, raw vegetables, hard fruits, whole grapes, raisins, and nuts. Supervise your child at all times when eating. How much should your toddler eat? Offer your toddler three meals and two to three healthy snacks a day, but expect them to skip meals sometimes. Letting them skip meals is hard for many parents, but let them respond to their own internal cues for hunger and fullness. Don't push food on a child who is not hungry. So the take home message of this PowerPoint is download the Milestones Tracker app to keep track of important milestones. If you suspect something, don't wait because taking early action can make a real difference. Make sure to give your child lots of room to grow, be independent, and limit that screen time. And always be aware of child safety. So thank you for watching today. We really hope you found some helpful tips and resources for tracking your baby's development. If you have any questions about what we talked about or something that we didn't, please comment on the video below or ask them in the Facebook Live Q&A session at 10 a.m. today. Also, if you submit a question, we will, you will be entered into a drawing to win a prize. Unfortunately, we will not be having a social session today following the Q&A session. However, we encourage you all to stay connected with one another via phone number, email, or social media as you all continue to go through this journey together. Lastly, don't forget about diaper day and prize pickup at 11 o'clock today. Thank you again, and we hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.